Hey, you wanna chew on a dinosaur? Show that thing who's boss. <laughs> yeah. This one loves chewing on plastic dinosaurs. I do not know why. It is New Year's Eve, and I need to take care of a couple of things. Hopefully gonna go out this afternoon with a friend. I think we're just gonna hang out, not necessarily go to any parties or anything. We might, I don't know. But there's a couple of things I need to take care of before I go to make sure tonight will be successful no matter what we do. Uh, first off, we're getting the cold brew set up here. Got some uh, eight o'clock um, coffee. It's whole bean, I just ground it up. And kind of strange, I was noticing, so I wave the camera around. I was noticing it had this decal here that says it's um, Rainforest Alliance certified. I got the thinking, what the heck does that actually mean? Like, and it's got a picture of a frog. But then, it says it's 50% certified. That immediately makes me think that nefarious things may have happened with the production and transport of this coffee. As extra precautions, I'm using, I'm using the paper filters in case there's any extra bits of tree frog that made its way into the coffee. The wire mesh screen that's in there is not enough. We need to actually filter it. The beans have been sitting here blooming, as the weirdos say. Let's dump the rest of the water in here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, that was pretty anticlimactic. Um, my silverware's in there, but the drills on top of it. Uh, whoo! Is this clean? Meh. Give this a little stir. Yeah, that's some good stuff right there. Does this make you want to drink coffee? I'll just measure in about eh, that much. Nah, eh, a, little, a little more. Okay, there we go. Okay, we are now all set, I think. And I'm pretty sure this is how I always get drips of coffee on my floor. I keep forgetting there's a light over here. Hang on. Ta -da! Okay, we'll get this put up here. There we go. Put the beaker in here. Use the rainmaker as some sort of weird cover. Keep the cats from playing in it. A little bit of product placement. And we're good. Let's get to this other stuff we need to take care of before this evening. Among the many other problems I have, there's an issue inside my head that stemmed originally from when I broke my head open when I was two years old. Essentially really loud sounds and concussive things like bass and trains and just other loud banging things. Screws up my equilibrium really bad. I had these, well, still have them, they're broken. These are some 3M electronic uh, audio compressors, basically. And I bought these a couple of years ago, and at the time, you could send them in to the manufacturer and have them custom tuned to a specific profile. Well, unfortunately, I ran over these with my chair, and they don't, I just found them looking through my stuff. I remembered them being a lot more broken than they actually are. The only problem, the only problem these actually have is right here. This part became disconnected from just this one side. The other side's still fine. I'm thinking I might be able to drill this out because it used to be plastic and attach something in here to hold this back in place. They don't sell, they don't sell these anymore, and these allowed me to go to places like concerts and other things like that. Today being New Year's Eve, just in case I do want to go to a club or party or something, I would like to have these with me so I can be inside of a building that's loud. I'm charging the drill battery. I'm going to see if I can drill and tap or do something to these to get them back together. While I was at Goodwill the other day, I managed to get some drill bits. They seem to be pretty much brand new in a little plastic bag. Who would have thought you can get those at Goodwill? 
I'm gonna have to be really careful here, but I think what I can do is drill this down a little bit and install some sort of fastener, like a little machine screw or bolt or something like that. So it sticks out of here and then I can clamp this hook around it. Cause the way these are supposed to be, as you can see here, is there's a little plastic nub that sticks out and this thing just hooks to it. I don't care if this will be able to rotate, I just need it to be attached. Then I can put them on my head and if need be, I can bend these metal parts here. Uh, so we're gonna see what happens. I have to be careful because the microphone is right here and I don't know what's directly under this. I don't know how to take these apart. I think they're glued together. Anyways, we'll see what we can do here. Okay, I've detached this from the other side. The wire is still hooked up, but you can see here how there's a nub sticking out here and not on this side. When I backed over it with my chair, somehow that's the only thing that broke. I thought they were trashed, but I think this is totally fixable. Get out the old hardware kit here from Harbor Freight and see if we can find some fasteners that will fit in this thing. Uh, let's see here. These are all a little bit long, but at least I can figure out the size. Ooh, that one's perfect. Look at that. Totally threads right in there. It's a 1024 by three quarter inch. Cool. Uh, I don't know if I have anything shorter than this. I guess worst case scenario, we could trim this thing. But I think this will work great because it's got the head on the end of it here. So once it's in there, oh yeah, look at that. It fits perfectly in that little indent there. All right, let's make this work. Carefuling. Carefuling. Pro tip, if you're trying to do something like this and you need your drill to move really slow, just make sure the battery's mostly dead. Oh man, that is so perfect. Look at, look at this. We've got the hole drilled here and I think that's an appropriate depth. Let's see if our uh, little screw fits in here. Oh uh, yeah. That's great. That'll, actually I won't even need to use any glue. I think that'll tap itself right in there. Okay, cool. Uh, now we need to make this shorter because this is way too long. It's probably, it's on the floor. Luckily I have more. <laughs> that went under the dishwasher and ain't coming back. Yeah, I think uh, if we cut it off so it's about yay long, we should be good. Uh, I was trying to figure out how I was gonna cut this. I figured using diagonal cutters was not gonna work and obviously it's not. I think I'm gonna have to dig deeper into my stash and find a screw that's already shorter than this because there's no way I'm getting out the sawzall. I can't hold this and use the saw and actually cut this. I mean, yeah. Uh, see what else we got here. Luckily, I keep almost every screw, keep almost every screw from every project I work on. And um, it comes in handy sometimes. My thought was gonna be originally when I had to fix this, that I would just have to get out some epoxy and glue the crap out of it. But as much springy force as these have, there's no way that would hold. Even epoxy would just snap right off. I think we found something in the old cracker box. Buried in this bag. There it is. Look at this. Oh, this is gonna be so perfect. The question is, dare I drill it any deeper? Cause I don't know if there's a PCB or a circuit board inside here. Oh wait. Oh no, so I just checked the depth here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drill this a little bit more. Our holes have been drilled. Where's the screw? There it is. We'll go ahead and put this on here. And I'm so confident it's gonna work, we'll actually assemble it now at the same time. Let's see here. This is like perfect. If I seem really happy about this, I am, because uh, like I said, this headset's not for sale anymore. And I couldn't, wait, did I do that backwards? And the other alternatives are like $300 and you can't tune them to the profile you want. That's the key, is I have to be able to specify the frequencies I need these things to filter out. Okay, let's go ahead and get these tightened down here. 
This metal's just slightly bent. It's just spring steel though. I think I can bend it back. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's put some batteries in it. It fits on my head. All right, got my ears in there. It's fired up. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this side? Yeah, we're good. They totally work. Um, to be honest, though, this side doesn't seem to work as doesn't seem to work as well. The batteries might be low, but yeah, this will totally do. Nice. Now we can go to the club where it's noisy. I couldn't be more happier or, or with the results on this. Um, this uh, this side here is stock with the two plastic things, and then over here is the repair. We've got the plastic one and then the metal screw, and I mean they look pretty much identical. It's even black in color, so it's not sticking out. Uh, yeah, these things are awesome. They've got microphones, one on each side. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier. I should have I should have done this a long time ago. I don't know. Like I said, I guess I thought they were more broken than they are. I just found them. Oh, and you can also plug in a headphone or an aux cable here and listen to music or your podcasts and use this knob to blend the outside world with the input coming in through that jack. So they're pretty sweet. I ran out to the grocery store in this thing a little bit ago, and I was noticing that these front casters are fluttering a little bit. And from time to time, they need to be adjusted. Basically, under this cap, there's a giant nut, and it needs to be tightened down a little bit. As you're going at speed, these things, if that nut is not tight enough, will tend to flutter around and kind of make this chair shake a little bit. So I'm gonna pop these caps off here and see what's going on. All right, basically, you just need to get these caps off of here. These ones are already screwed up because they came that way from the people that aren't very smart that built this chair or didn't build it. I don't know. The people in Indiana aren't very smart and they already screwed this up. Otherwise, I wouldn't normally recommend prying that up with a screwdriver because it makes the plastic all weird, but whatever. Sorry, neighbors. Giant nut. You just have to tighten it down a little bit so this thing is not as loose. There isn't a specific torque spec for these. The way they measure it is when you give the wheel a fling, it should turn about three quarters of the way after you give it a medium fling. And as you can see here, it's doing way more than that. And so is that side. Well, let's get this one adjusted first. Okay, wow, these are large. That's a 15 16th socket and a half inch drive ratchet. Now this is not gonna take very much turning at all. So basically, just hold the wheel and uh, give it a little tweak. And I've got I've got the blocks under the chair there, but it's oh never mind it is off the ground. I just tightened it too much. So that little tiny bit I just turned it was way too much. That's how fine of an adjustment this is. Oh. And it is rubbing on the ground, never mind. Um, okay, I stuck this cardboard box under here. Um, although, now it's gonna hit the box. Well, I can get kind of an idea of how tight it is even with that box there. Okay, tighten it down a little bit. Way too tight. Loosen it up a little bit. Still too tight. A little more, still pretty tight. That's really loose. I wonder if these bearings are just screwed up. It looks like... What the heck? This is the one thing they replaced when this chair was in Indiana. They were fine. They didn't need to be replaced. But it looks like they put it back together wrong. Hang on, let me get a flashlight. Okay, these people do not know what they're doing. See this washer down here? See how it's moving independently and kind of flopping all around? Why? Okay. I'm going to take this nut completely out of here and see what's going on, because once again, those people don't know what they're doing. Okay, this thing is so rusted in place, it's not even going to come out of here. 
so for now, I still need to order the parts to get the rest of this chair fixed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some lube in here, tighten it back up, and call it good for now until I get the parts I need to fix everything on this chair. I, I hate doing stuff like this, but at this point, I'm not, I'm not really sure what else to do because I need it to work, at least in the meanwhile. And ugh, ugh. okay, I've got the lube in here. I've flipped the washer over so it's at least concave and it shouldn't be dragging. Threw some lube in there. Let's get it worked into this bearing a little bit. Spin this around a bit here, both directions. Seems like we're pretty good. We're not getting any noise out of there now. We'll tighten this thing up the rest of the way and get it adjusted as best we can with the parts that we have. Okay, this is a spec that the service manual says, give it a fling and it gives you a three quarter rotation. If you fling it really hard, it goes around once, but just kind of a medium, wah, it's about three quarters of a rotation. And it gives you just a tiny bit of resistance. Uh, all right, let's get this other side taken apart. I have a feeling it's also put together improperly. <sighs> mm. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. All right, moving on to the driver's side. Look at that thing go, Wee! Oh, looky there, it's also assembled improperly. Weird, huh? I may sound like a jerk sometimes. You know the history with this thing. I got it for half price, but I still paid $15,000 for it. And it was shipped out to the United States distributor for them to fix it. They told me I had a warranty for three years. Then they changed their mind and said, oh, there's no warranty at all. They paid $1,000, $500 each way to get this thing out to Indiana and back. Look at it, say there's nothing wrong. They let some air out of the tires because they said there was too much air in there. They changed these bearings on all four corners, which were not bad, but now they're assembled incorrectly, so I have to fix it. And they shipped it back and said, there you go. We changed the software, wasn't a problem. Let some air out of the tires, uh, that's, I don't understand that. We replaced some bearings that weren't bad. So yeah, I, I'm a little bit annoyed with them, but whatever. This is a spring washer and it's in here upside down. It's designed to ride on the inner surface of the bearing as this turns, but they put it in there the wrong way so it's not even touching the bearing. It's basically just causing problems. So we'll pull this out of here. Okay. See how it's concave on one side? It's like dished here and it's sticking out on the other side. It's supposed to go in there like this. And, oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna pretend I didn't look in there. That's the other thing. All the parts I need to make this chair working in 100% awesome condition is gonna be around five or 600 bucks, including shipping. I went to the actual manufacturer in Australia and they're working with me directly. So I'm waiting till I have enough money to order that stuff and get it over here. I'm gonna have to add these bearing components and these washers that they ruined <laughs> to the list of parts I need. Um, but once that's done, we'll be fine. For now, it still works, kinda, but I keep having to screw around with things. I will admit though, those bearings look pretty old, but these, these nuts, these nylocks, these are brand new. Maybe that's what they did. They just popped off these caps and put new nylocks in here because that's the only thing you can see when you open the lid. Okay, we got the thing lubed. It's all put back together now. And we've got our rotational coasting spec all set up to factory standards. Um, I should probably check the rears, but I don't have time to do that right now. Eh. Okay, let's... Um, yeah, get off the floor. Thank you Logitech Harmony Box, you served us well on this repair.